This division series in the American League here in Houston, they have the stage all to themselves. Yankees Guardians postponed due to rain. They're going to saddle up tomorrow for game two of that series. So from Valdez to the mound he goes, sporting the Navy tops. That's his preferred choice of uniform. And the Houston Astros go for the 2-0 lead in this series. Meanwhile, the Seattle Mariners know they are going home to T-Mobile Park on Saturday. And they are trying to put a win on the board. Scott Service lines him up this way. Julio Rodriguez with a couple of hits in the opener. He leads off. Ty France, then Eugenio Suarez. Those top three were outstanding in game one. Mitch Hanniger, Carlos Santana, Dylan Moore in the middle. Moore gets his first start. Cal Raleigh dropped to the seventh spot in the order with Adam Frazier and J.P. Crawford, the two left-handed bats, down at the bottom of the order against left-hander Fromber Valdez, and he has emerged as a real star in this league. Kind of the Astros' second ace behind Verlander, B.A. He led all of the American League in innings pitch this year and added a cutter. So he's got the sinker, the cutter, and then, of course, 124 strikeouts on that big curveball. And we're going to take a look right here at his pitch repertoire. He really can come at you so many ways. You see that sinker almost 50% of the time. And then that big curveball. Like I said, he's added that changeup to kind of keep the right-hander from diving out over the plate. 25 double plays this year, most in the American League. Ball's going to be put in play. There's going to be a, a premium on defense, Frenchie. Well, Gold Glover, Martin Maldonado behind the plate. Alex Bregman, Jeremy Pena, Jose Altuve, and Yoli Gurriel, the Gold Glover from last year at first base. And then going to the outfield, of course, game one hero, Jordan Alvarez in left field. Jake Myers getting the start field start today in center field. And, of course, strong arm Kyle Tucker in right field. Jake Myers was injured last year in the division series and anxious to get his start, first start in the postseason this year. Check the umpires. Jensen Visconti will call the balls and strikes. Marvin Hudson, he's the crew chief. He's over at first base. Second base umpires, Corey Blazer. James Hoy is at third. And the two outfield umpires... Carlos Torres in left field and Pat Hoberg is the right field umpire all the pieces in place here great to have you with us on this Thursday afternoon Brian Anderson with Jeff Francoeur Matt Weiner today's game produced by Tom Heights and directed by John Moore and our excellent TBS crew Julio Rodriguez already chirping on his way to the box There's a strong Dominican presence here with both of these teams. And Framber Valdez ready to fire. First pitch of the ball game. And that's in there for a strike. And away we go. Valdez against Luis Castillo. Just the fifth time two Dominican-born pitchers will match up in a playoff game. First time since the 2017 season. Bouncing ball to short. Got to hurry with Rodriguez. No problem. For Pena, that's how the day begins for Framber Valdez. Well, and I can go ahead, B.A. We might as well hit it right off the top. Scott Service talked to him. If they continue to try to, you know, pull Framber Valdez, you're in for a long day. You have to use up the middle the other way. He was very adamant today. If we take that same approach against Verlander, where you try to shoot it up the middle the other way, we have a chance. But if you try to pull the ball... He is so tough to get the ball in the air. I mean, you and I watch a lot of batting practice during the regular season. Today's batting practice for the Seattle Mariners was uh, something different than you normally see as Ty France takes a strike. Well, usually you come here, you're trying to hit the choo-choo train <laughs> exactly. up in left field. At least I did. Maybe that's why I'm trying with you up here. Trying to Bobby Dynamite <laughs> up there. <laughs> but they were shooting that ball through the uh, uh, hole at second base, driving to right center, and that's what they're going to have to do here. Much different approach. Verlander struggled yesterday, but the Astros offense covered him. And France, a big swing and a miss, was way out in front of that curveball from Valdez. It's pretty much any pitch in any count. And as you mentioned, Frenchie, he's added the cutter. That's given, given him another wrinkle against right-handed batters. O2 pitch. Bouncing ball foul. Ty France. One of the better contact hitters on this team. And yesterday, or beg your pardon, Tuesday, France with three hits. He drove in two runs, had an RBI double in the fourth inning of game one. Top of that Mariners order 
was added early against Justin Verlander, and they kept the pedal down. Played almost a perfect ball game, did the Mariners, until the last two innings, and really still had a chance to win. Mariners four times, I beg your pardon, three times had a four-run lead. And in the ninth with a two-run deficit, Jordan Alvarez hits a three-run home run. A historic home run here in game one. A ball and two strikes on France. Valdez can't get him to bite. That evens it at two and two. The one reason we talk about base hits, center field, right center. They have faced him now in seven starts, over 51 innings pitched. BA, zero home runs for the Mariners. Off. Mm -hmm. Fromber. And they've never beaten him. No. Nope. Five and zero oh is the career record. And Valdez misses inside. He's a very familiar opponent. Same division, American League West. Astros finished with 106 wins, which was the second most in their franchise history at 107 in the 2019 season. Meanwhile, the Mariners with 90 wins, back to back 90 win seasons for Seattle. And that one's in there. A called strike three. Sinking fastball at 95 miles an hour. And Valdez has his first strikeout. Look how much that ball came back out over the or in. It almost kind of looked like it was going to be that cutter in. That ball had some serious sink back and got France looking. Good pitch. So two away here in the top of the first. And Valdez will face Eugenio Suarez. Suarez with two hits yesterday. Popped a key home run at the time in the seventh inning. He's up there hacking, swinging a foul. So Suarez with his two hits in game one Tuesday has three consecutive multi-hit games. And he has been a hot bat. Great numbers this year. 31 home runs, 87 RBIs. The fourth occasion he has gone into the 30 homer club. The 0 1, that one misses up and away. Well, one thing this offense, I guarantee, even though they're facing Valdez and it's a tough uh, pitcher on the mound, they've scored 21 runs now in three postseason games. So, offensively, BA, they got a lot of confidence mm -hmm. right now up at the plate. And yeah. they should. They should. They've had significant contributions from some hitters who were struggling during the regular season. Guys like Santana and Frazier. And Frazier is in the lineup today, despite the left-hander on the mound. Santana elevates up the lineup a bit into the five spot. Two balls and a strike. A swing and a miss. That pitch right there is so tough to lay off. And I guarantee you France a little bit on that 3-2 was thinking about that pitch. 124 strikeouts on that pitch. He has got a over a 45% whiff rate on it. Best in all of baseball. It's a change of pace. It's got huge break. And a chance for a punch out here to end the first. 2-2 two -two on its way. And that one misses. Blocked well just in case by Maldonado. Maldonado is excellent behind the plate. Great game caller. Pitch framer. Blocks the ball well. He's a big reason why all these pitchers want to throw to Maldonado. You know what? 2 2 France laid off the curveball. He came back with that two seamer in. Same thing here. Let's see what he does. 3 2. And Suarez hoists it in the air. Deep fly ball to right, but no problem. Tucker puts it away in front of Valdez. Off to a 1 2 3 start. And now the Astros coming to bat. Tuve, Jeremy Pena, and Jordan Alvarez ready to get this one started. Diaz and Myers, the two changes in the Astros starting lineup here today for Dusty Baker. And one of the great leadoff hitters in the game, Jose Altuve, breaks his bat on the first pitch. And Castillo dug out by France. Castillo, one pitch and one out. And let's set up this talented right-hander, one of the biggest acquisitions in Major League Baseball at the trade deadline, and he has been terrific for the Mariners. Well, B.A., I can't blame Altuve trying to get that first pitch out over the zone. He's got electric stuff, going to 
sit at 100 with that sinker, the fastball up, and he has two very, very good pitches in that changeup and slider going the other way. Look at that. He can attack you four different ways, and it is tough as a hitter. Dusty Baker told us today, he said, man, this guy, I've only seen him on TV, haven't faced him yet, but he said he looks really tough to hit. Aaron Castillo pumps one in at 98 to Jeremy Pena. Great velocity for Castillo. First look for the Astros against Castillo because he was in Cincinnati. Matter of fact, the Mariners were in this ballpark when that trade went down. And uh, Scott Service told us it was one of his best memories walking into this ballpark again for this division series is remembering when the news came down that the Mariners had acquired Castillo who launches one back to the screen. Scott Service, the former Astro, caught a no-hitter as an Astros catcher. The late Daryl Kyle. Fond memories of his playing days, but uh, not so fond memories matching up against this division rival these last few years. Service in his seventh year as the Mariners skipper, and it has been rough sledding at Minute Maid Park for the Mariners. They've lost 31 of 38 games against the Astros in this ballpark. Castillo delivers to Pena, and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Went with a changeup right there, and two men are gone in the first. Well, and catching him, Cal rally, uh, Raleigh behind the plate, of course. And then going around, Gino Suarez at third. J.P. Crawford with the big home run in game one. Adam Frazier, Ty France, and in the outfield, the only change, Dylan Moore getting the start today in left field, Julio Rodriguez, and, of course, Mitch Hanniger in right field. Jordan Alvarez it's a hero's welcome here with two away and you said it in the open Frenchie I mean every kid's dream he got to live out on a big stage and he's up there hacking on the first pitch he fouls it away well even that you saw how far out that pitch was that was a good four or five inches off the plate he's got such long arms his plate yes. coverage is amazing so that is actually an answer to the question that Scott Service has been getting a bit why are we pitching to Jordan Alvarez now? Those were two fastballs in the middle of the plate yesterday. Boy, good looking pitch right there as Castillo drops a changeup on Alvarez. How about these numbers here? He is hot rolling into the postseason and then carried it over. Even with a five day layoff, 407 average with seven homers on this terrific run. And we showed it too during uh, the hit earlier with the studio. He can do it with his glove too. Had the guy yeah. had the big throw out at home to keep it at four runs in the fifth inning the other day. Now that was a big play. Firm throw That's into it. the plate to cut down Ty France. It's two hard fastballs now. Let's see if he goes back to that changeup. What down. a matchup here! World class. These two. Both at the top of the food chain right now. Castillo delivers, and that one's right off the end of the back. The changeup, and Castillo goes through the Astros. One, two, three, with a strikeout. Off and running here in Houston. We go to the second. Mariners coming to bat. On schedule now, we've had to rearrange some things. Put the boys back to work on Friday. Game two, Guardians Yankees. They're postponed today. So they'll be back 1230 airtime. Ernie Johnson and the gang will get it started. Bob Costas, Ron Darling, Lauren Shahadi will have the call for you. Braves and Phillies tomorrow on FS1. Afternoon affair in Philadelphia and then the Dodgers and the Padres. Stay out West Coast, 830 Eastern start on FS1 tomorrow. So that's the schedule. Only game of the day in the division series rounds is today right here in Houston is Mitch Hanniger. Takes a strike from Valdez, now a ball, and it's even at a ball and a strike as we begin the second inning. Well, we had the dome here, right? So we knew we were playing today. The Tractable Roof Series. And uh, how fun is it going to be to post up at T-Mobile Park? The place is going to be rocking. Oh, cannot wait. One of the great ballparks in the big leagues. Hanniger bounces to Altuve. So the ground balls are coming. Second ground ball out, also has a strikeout. And one away for Framber Valdez. He's retired the first four Mariners.
right now his two main pitches that sinker and curveball look sharp. Switch hitter Carlos Santana turns around hits right handed. His postseason home run which came Saturday in Toronto came as a right handed batter and he swings at the first pitch. For Santana his batting average is higher as a right handed hitter. Most of his power majority of his home runs coming as a left handed batter hit 19 in the regular year 16 as a lefty. But hit under 200 as a lefty so. Chance to get to his more comfortable side. Yeah hit 265 against southpaws this year. So good average for him. OPS for Santana maybe the biggest stat as a right handed batter at an 824 OPS combining on base plus slugging percentage. Oh and to the count. He's got a good fastball. Usually Valdez you see more kind of right around 93 94. That fastball right now is sitting 95 96 and right there we even saw a 97 to Carlos. It's been eight days since his last start he pitched the last game. Of the regular season last Wednesday a little bit of a tune up. Dusty Baker felt like maybe the extra days. Affected Verlander yesterday Verlander did not look himself. Verlander. Most likely headed for a Cy Young Award, which will be his third. Had a magical year. And uh, there is a path to see Verlander once again in this division series, you would think. Dusty Baker was keeping those cards close to the vest, but certainly an opportunity to get his ace back on the mound if this series goes five. A uh, swing and a miss. Just wiped him out with a big curveball. Man, the curveball has some serious dick to it right now. Well, it's, you know, it's one thing to lay off at one time, but when he keeps coming at it as a hitter, when you got to respect 96, look at that. I mean, that ball is starts at the top of the zone, and by the time Maldonado catches it, it's on the ground. Mm. Don't those hiss as they go by you? Oh, man. <laughs> I walked back many times on that pitch. <laughs> So two minute out second K for Valdez and here is Dylan Moore making his postseason debut. So Moore is kind of at the center of the decision making process for Scott service which really boils down to Jared Kelnick versus Adam Frazier but Moore is part of that equation. Well you know Castillo is a big time running that ball in you get a lot of ground balls and he didn't want to mess with the infield defense and so he decided Frazier's been swinging the back good so Moore went to left field today. Huh. Moore's versatility gives him the flexibility as he takes a strike so it, it's possible Moore could have played second base in a different scenario. Kelnick would have got the start in left field. Kelnick the 23 year old rookie did have two hits in game one but uh, service putting a premium on the infield defense with Castillo on the mound zips one in for a strike that's his best fastball yet 96 mile an hour cheese from Fromber Valdez well, if you're a Mariners hitter right now there is no rhyme or reason he's throwing that fastball and he's throwing that curveball and it's really tough to sit on a pitch He's retired five in a row two K's for Valdez. He's got more one two. Bouncing ball foul. That was a curveball that more fouled away. Valdez already has three swings and misses on the curve. How Raleigh do next. Yeah, more two had a nice finish to the season three oh four in his last twenty five games will be I think that had a little something to do with him getting the start today. See what Valdez has in mind for him here. Two strike pitch on the ground. Slow bouncer. Bregman fires. Bregman makes the play. Nicely done. Three up, three down again for Valdez. And Bregman 
cleans it up to finish the inning, and he is ready to lead off. Hit a key home run in game one. He'll start it when we come back. Alvarez made the headlines, but this home run by Alex Bregman was huge for the Astros in game one. Well, you remember 7-3 going to the eighth inning. Munoz, their best reliever on the mound, and Bregman takes a slider and gets it within two runs, which I thought was a huge part of the game. He's had so many big hits in the postseason in his career. He came up with a huge home run in game one for Houston. Alex Bregman starts it in the second, followed by Kyle Tucker, then Yuli Gurriel. Luis Castillo is not messing around here, folks. And uh, what you can see is legit and very impressive. What you can't see is between innings when he's coming out on the mound. I mean, he's like that thoroughbred in the uh, in the stable, ready to run. I mean, Bregman had he had his batting gloves coming out, and he was already on the mound waiting. The umpire's like, "Look, we still got 45 seconds." He's already taken his eight pitches. Just. I think he's ready to show the world what he's got. Menacing on the mound. And how good was Castillo against the Blue Jays last Friday? There is a path for Castillo to return to this series as well, even though it was a little tight to get him back for game one. The idea was get him full rest plus a day and pitch game two. And then on three days rest, the Mariners, if they force a game five, if they get it to that level, they could have him available. And it looks like, Frenchie, the Mariners are going to go with three starters in this best of five series. Well, game four, you're going to have a way to get Gilbert on full rest. So that makes sense. And, I mean, I hate to say it. If you're in a game five back here, it's hard not to start yeah. this guy on three days rest. And then you got the whole bullpen, whatever you got to do after that. Bregman fouls one away. Scott Service told us before the game, George Kirby is going to get the ball for game three in Seattle. The rookie been the Mariners best pitcher at times this year and so with all that juice at uh, T-Mobile Park the rookie is going to get the ball right now it's Castillo and Bregman leans on one lazy pop up Crawford is out will give way and Moore puts it away for the out one away for Luis Castillo as we send it down to Matt Weiner well, B.A., as the trade deadline approaches, with the exception of Juan Soto, there was no more sought-after player than Luis Castillo. And Scott Service told us he began hearing from his players that you got to get this guy. First, that's not Service's job, but the point stands. And when they finally did, they were as excited as anybody. Eugenio Suarez, his old teammate with Cincinnati, said he texted him right away. He told me today he loves his passion and how much he competes. Even bigger than acquiring Castillo may have been signing him to a long-term deal, which happened in late September. And Service said he was so excited about it, he called Castillo into his office and actually jumped into his arms. <laughs> and now, of course, the Mariners are hoping they can that Castillo can carry them to a Game 2 win. Yeah, you're sitting in that clubhouse, and it's the trade deadline coming up, and you find out. Tucker sends one high and deep to right field. He's watching this one fly, and Kyle. Tucker puts the Astros on the board. A roof scraper. Well, you see the 107 off the bat, 370. What I want to know, what was the hang time on that ball? I mean, that thing almost hit the top of the roof. Kyle Tucker caught this pitch out front. And, boy, you can tell, I mean, it almost, you're right, B.A., hit the roof. It was in the air forever. Kyle Tucker has six career postseason home runs now. On the first pitch, a drive into right center by Guriel, and that'll be run down by Hanniger as we take you back to the powerful swing of Kyle Tucker. Yeah, this is a slider that crept too far back over the plate. And just look at that. I mean, straight up 6.7 seconds in the air. Golfed it. Yeah. First run that Castillo has allowed in his first two starts of the postseason. Went seven and third shutout against the Blue Jays. And Tucker touches them all. And the Astros score first. First pitch swing from Aledmus Diaz. 
Yeah, finishing off what Matt was saying, though, if you're sitting in that clubhouse and you hear you get a guy like Castillo to your team, it just it pumps you up. It mm. believes they believe we can win this thing. Changes everything. Popped him up, Diaz. And it'll be Ty France, and he's got it. That will end the inning, but Kyle Tucker puts the Astros on the board. He had 30 in the regular season. Drove in 107. He's a slugger, and it's 1-0 Houston. LB app. You can get daily lineups, live pitch-by-pitch. Pitch. A free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. Kyle Tucker. Got a warm welcome as he made his way out to right field. He just launched a home run out there and has the Astros in the lead one to nothing. We go to the third from Valdez facing Cal Raleigh to start it. And on the first pitch, Raleigh, ooh, that took a wicked bounce. No problem for Pena, though. And Raleigh rolls out. And the Mariners, again, to your point, Jeff. You try, start to try to pull the baseball against Framber Valdez. It ends up in a lot of ground balls. Yeah, and as you said, this hop kind of, watch this right here. I don't know if it hit the edge. Well, you can see it kind of came up on Pena. You know, something that was interesting, too, that was the first matchup between those two. Cal Raleigh had never faced Valdez before that first pitch. Yeah, he is. Really has struggled against the left-handed pitchers. We'll get into that story a little bit later, but Raleigh has not been playing much against left-handed starters. Been over a month. Adam Frazier, again, to your point, Jeff, you try, start to try to pull the baseball against Framber Valdez. It ends up in a lot of ground balls. Yeah, and as you said, this hop kind of, watch this right here. I don't know if it hit the edge. Well, you can see it kind of came up on Pena. You know, something that was interesting, too, that was the first matchup between those two. Cal Raleigh had never faced Valdez before that first pitch. Yeah, he is really has struggled against the left-handed pitchers. We'll get into that story a little bit later, but Raleigh has not been playing much against left-handed starters. Been over a month. Adam Frazier. You get a couple of lefties now in the bottom of the order for the Mariners and two quick strikes from Fromber Valdez. He's got Frazier in a hole. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Wiped him out. Frazier strikes out on a cut fastball from Valdez. Two gone in the inning. Strikeout number three, Frenchie. Yeah, and you, that's such a tough A.B. You take two fastballs painted away, knowing chances are you're going to get this pitch. Mm. And it's just you can't lay off it. He is pitching very confidently right now. Two away, J.P. Crawford takes a ball inside. Crawford hit a home run off Verlander in game one. Not known for his power, hit six in the regular season. But it was a booming home run to right field. Stretch had lead at the time. That ball's hit well at the left. That's a short porch out there. And off the wall it goes. It bangs off of Alvarez. And there is the first hit of the game for the Mariners. And it comes from the red-hot J.P. Crawford. At that key three RBI hit against the Blue Jays. In the big comeback for the Mariners on Saturday. Had a homer in game one. Now he's got a double here with two outs. He right, got the short fence there in left field. And you can see Alvarez kind of had to go a little ways for it. Couldn't really get there in time. And it's tough when that ball's slicing away from you like that. And right here, Seattle with their first chance. And this is actually what they've done the first three games. They're 13 of 32, 406 with runners in scoring position so far in the postseason. Taking advantage of the short porch that the Astros usually take advantage of so well. It's only 315 down that line. It's a 19-foot wall, but it is close. First ball swinging up the middle. Altuve throwing a first. And it's in time. Oh, what a play. I didn't think he had a chance. This is one of the fastest players in the league, Julio Rodriguez. 
And Jose Altuve, not known for his throwing arm. And you bet. That is in time for the out. Great pick by Guriel, the gold glover. And a defensive gem to get Valdez out of the inning. To the bottom of the third we go. Play Jose Altuve, ball up the middle. Rodriguez be a 30.8 sprint speed, yet he was still able to get it, jump throw it, and you said great pick at first. I mean, he was cooking down the line, but that was some play. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. And so here we go with Castillo back on the mound. one nothing Astros. Jake Myers leads off for Houston. His first start in a postseason game since he injured his shoulder last year against the White Sox. And, uh, been a long recovery road for Jake Myers. Still... A little bit of question about his throwing. He is an excellent defensive outfielder, and he's thrown enough that the Astros are comfortable to uh, roll him back out there. They have essentially three center fielders. Jake Myers, Mauricio Dubon, Chaz McCormick. Probably going to boil down to Myers and McCormick for the rest of this postseason for Dusty Baker. Chaz McCormick got the start yesterday. Castillo deals him a strike at 98, two and two the count. And what I was keeping on that play by Altuve too. Sometimes, how many times do you see a guy try to make that play short hop? The ball goes past, and the runner from second scores. That's why having a Gold Glove first baseman pays too. Yeah, Guriel deserves a lot of credit. That's a good call. That's a called strike three. Castillo burns off the outside edge. One away. Strikeout number two. Had a moment ago. Scott Service sat down with Matt Weiner. Scott JP was finally able to lift something, hit something in the air hard against Fromberg's a very specific matchup for you guys. What can you do differently to get to him? Oh, he's got good stuff today, first of all, no question about it. He's really working the breaking ball in along with the good two-seamer. So we got to get the ball up, like I said, get some balls in the air and stay inside the ball, and we'll be okay. But uh, a lot of ball game left. Tucker got to Castillo for the solo shot, but what is your confidence level having seen him for a couple couple of months now? Uh, very high. You know, Luis has got great stuff. He's going to be very aggressive, get after these guys. He left one changeup down, Tucker got on it, but like I said, a lot of ball game left to play. All right, thanks much. Yeah. You know, Scott knows that Valdez is out there dealing right now, but on the other side, you heard him. He's got the rock, his rock on the mound <laughs> in Castillo. Yeah, that's his nickname. Been his nickname for a while, even before his time in professional baseball, as Martin Maldonado takes two quick strikes. That's what you want out of your ace. He's been that rock for him. From his very first start as a Mariner when he beat the Yankees. Maldonado down the right field line. That is just foul. They could have bit it a two strike hit. First time through the batting order, Frenchie Castillo has hit on first pitch strikes to all nine batters. This was very close. You know, he caught Maldonado leaning a little bit right there, B.A. I wonder here if he's going to burn that two seamer in at 99 on him. Keep him honest. Are you sensing a broken bat coming? Going away again. Yeah, going away with that slider. One and two the count. There's no fastball like Castillo's fastball. There are other pitchers who throw 98 to 100. There are other starters. There aren't many, but there are others. But the way it moves, the release point, gives up very few hits on the fastball. And that one at 99 and just carves him up. Maldonado strikes out. Two up, two down, two Ks. I can see he just rears back and just absolutely beats him to the spot. And, and this is where, you know, we're talking about Valdez on one side, Ooh. how tough he is. Castillo, he's got four pitches, B.A., that can strike you out at any time. The fastball, the sinker, his changeup and slider, both this year, 33 Ks on each pitch. So it's kind of pick your poison. And what separates him from most is that he can do it for a sustained amount of time. I mean, his fastball, even in the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, if he lasts that long, will still be in the upper 90s. 
Luis Castillo gets a fastball. Just a 151 batting average by the opponents. That is the best mark in all of baseball. Nestor Cortez, who is set to start today for the Yankees, is second on that list. Castillo just pouring in the strikes. He's got Altuve 0 2. He's sticking with the hard fastball on Altuve right now, trying to run it up and in. He doesn't want to throw that slider and give him a chance to hook the ball down the line. Here's the 0 2. That'll remain there. That was at 100 miles an hour. Astro hitters talking about Castillo in the, in the dugout. You can guarantee. Yeah, he's pretty good. Get ready. And a swing and a miss. So he goes with a changeup to get him. He strikes out the side in the third from a 100 mile an hour fastball to the 90 mile an hour changeup. Castillo, after giving up a home run in the second, dialed in in the third. Three up, three down, three Ks. We're through three, and it's one nothing. Here's Astros lead one nothing on a Kyle Tucker home run. Came with one out in the second. And France, Suarez, and Hanniger coming up. Against Framber Valdez. First ball swinging foul. Hey, don't miss a thing. This postseason you can follow at MLB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. That's how you keep up with everything baseball related. A lot of first pitch swings here for the Mariners against Valdez. France was the sixth in the first 11 batters to swing at the first pitch, and Valdez is ahead of him 0-2. Now, when you're pouring <laughs> strikes in there, the last thing you want to do is fall behind guys, but then what happens? You swing like this, and you're still 0-2. Hmm. Good take. You talk about mixing it up through the first three innings. Brian, 18 sinkers, 15 curves, and two cutters. So it's kind of flip a coin on that sinker uh, curveball combo. Three strikeouts for Valdez. One in each of the first three innings. And the one two. France able to lay off. Yeah. Valdez is a great story. Astros fans know it well. He was signed late. He's 21 when he signed. He's 28 now out of the Dominican Republic. All star for the first time this year. Was the winning pitcher. For the American League at the All-Star Game. And it is likely that Framber Valdez and Luis Castillo will be teammates in the WBC for the Dominicans. Bouncing ball up the middle. Altuve again. Got a little more time here. And another pick by Guriel. Man, Altuve is putting on a defensive clinic already. He does have a gold glove. Hasn't been quite that player the last couple of years, but this was excellent from Altuve. Man, what he does such a great job, too, is he gets rid of it quick. You give your first baseman a chance to make that pick. He's got six ground outs now on the afternoon. One away here in this fourth inning. Back-to-back -back great plays by Jose Altuve. That brings up Eugenio Suarez. Matt Weiner had a chance to visit with Dusty Baker between innings. Let's listen in. Dusty, that play to end the third by Jose Altuve is as good as you'll see from the second baseman. What have you learned to appreciate most about him in your three years together? Well, you know how hard he works and his concentration level. And he expects a lot out of himself and he gets a lot out of himself. And, uh, you know, we love him. The town loves him, and this guy's a ball player. How good is Fromber's stuff today? Fromber's stuff is very good. I mean, uh, it's going to boil down to probably who hits probably the most home runs because it's going to be hard to get two or three hits, uh, you know, consecutive hits in a row off, off either pitcher. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, you got it. I couldn't agree more with Dusty after three innings. Watching these two guys go at it, it's going to be a mistake or two that decides this ball game. I, the way they're going, I don't. You can't string three, four hits in a row. I don't think. Valdez give it up the double to J.P. Crawford. That's the only hit allowed. Came with two outs last inning, and then that great play by Altuve. Suarez fouls it away. Late on it. 
So when you talk stuff and Dusty Baker references, he's got great stuff. That is a perfect example. That is a middle, middle fastball in a 2 0 count to a very good hitter. And you're late. And he fouls it off to the right. Three balls and a strike now on Eugenio Suarez. You know, Valdez had such a good postseason in 2020 during the COVID year in the bubble. Last year for him, you know he's been itching for this moment. He had four starts last year being the postseason. Three of them, he didn't make it out of the third inning. Something that you know a competitor like him has been bugging him. Five games started last year. Two in the World Series. Had an ERA 7-7-8. And he walks Suarez. He's upset. He thought that was a strike. Missed down and in. Suarez is aboard. First walk issued by Valdez. And showing a lot of emotion on the mound after that. Maldonado makes him look good, but that was clearly a ball. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, you know, that's a 3-1 pitch. As you can see clearly off the plate by a good bit. So it's a base runner with one away for the Mariners. And now Mitch Hanniger, who's got a lot of pop in his bat. And he takes a ball low. That was the curveball from Valdez. Interesting how they label pitches here. The curveball is low 80s, upper 70s at times for Valdez. The cutter in the mid 80s. He'll add and subtract so much with that pitch, though. That's, it's so tough to tell. He deals. Hanniger takes a ball. So suddenly, back to back hitters. Valdez has fallen behind. Now, and this is where you saw Suarez got that 2 0 pitch was late. To Hanniger here, you're trying to drive this thing in that right center gap if you get that sinker, BA, right to the Astros bullpen. And Hanniger's got the kind of power he could drive one right out of here to right field. 2 and 0 oh, the count. And Hanniger lays off. Three balls, no strikes. I mentioned that reaction by Valdez on that walk to Suarez because that that is something he has really worked on. That's really what has taken his game to the next level here. He's worked hard to keep his emotions in check. He's been working with a sports psychologist the last few years. And the credits that work for his elevation in this game. That's a high strike on a fastball. I needed that about seven years ago. Yeah, that's uh, that's why you're sitting next to me. For exactly. <laughs> and we're glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, three one. Last time you got the off speed. Hitters count. Hanniger whistles one down the line that hits the sidewall. Suarez on his way to third. Hanniger into second with a double. Got himself in a good count, and Mitch Hanniger with a base hit. His second hit of this division series, and now the Mariners with two on, both in scoring position, just one out. Well, that's one of those fastballs that he got 3-1 up in the zone and turned on it right down the line. And this is the hardest thing about this park that never gets talked about. You see that little outlet there, right there in left field? So Alvarez is going to go down the line because he's got a plate if it goes all the way and then it hits and that thing went all the way luckily for Valdez Suarez was on first not great speed had to hold him at third Hanniger stays hot he's hitting six in a row now that includes four extra base hits and he has given the Mariners a chance here in the fourth inning one nothing Houston on a Kyle Tucker second inning home run Big spot here, Carlos Santana. Yeah, for example, with one out, you're not going to take that chance and get him thrown out. Really, for Santana here, anything up the middle, ground ball gets a run in to tie this ball game. 1-0 count to Santana, and it's two balls and no strikes.
So three consecutive batters Valdez has missed with the first pitch. And now falling behind into these hitters counts to Suarez Hanniger and Santana. Second and third one away. Carlos Santana takes a strike. Spinner that time a curveball. You know what coming into this inning to be a. Julio Rodriguez swung at the first pitch. He hasn't really pitched from the stretch yet today. One pitch coming into this inning. So now. Kind of seen him going from that. Yeah, That's a good point after that Crawford double in the third. And it started with a great play by Altuve for the first out. A walk and a double second and third. Mariners with a chance here. And Valdez misses. Three balls and a strike. Santana hit a key three run home run. Helped the Mariners claw their way back. Big part of their comeback in Toronto. Historic comeback. Three and one in there. That was a, I think the first changeup of the day. He had four curveballs in a row to Santana and then threw him a changeup at 89. Wants a new baseball. You never know when postseason games will swing. Bregman listening in on Pitchcom to hear the sign. Third consecutive three ball count for Fromber Valdez. See what he has in mind. Three and two. Santana on the ground. Slow roller. Gloved well. Going coming to the plate. Oh! Valdez throws it away. A run is in. Hanniger goes to third. And now going to get the run down. Santana between first and second. Altuve runs him down. Hanniger stays put. So it's the second out. Valdez with a wild throw to the plate. And we're all tied at one apiece as Suarez scores the run. And a wild sequence. That'll be an error on Valdez. Well, Valdez made a great play. Did not realize he had a little more time. And right here, tough, though, for Santana to get thrown out. Even if he stays at first, you've got first and third and one out. And right here, you can see Hanniger never really an opportunity to break home. Meeting at the mound here. Josh Miller with a chat with Valdez. One thing to keep in mind, remember, Carlos Santana has been dealing with a hamstring injury. You might remember mid at bat. In Toronto in game two, he caught a major cramp in his hamstring, and he did a lot of running right here. Just a wild throw by Fromber Valdez. I mean, no need. That would have been a spectacular play, yeah. but the odds of that being successful are minimal. Yeah, and again, he did it so fast, he might have actually had a second to kind of gather himself before he threw that. But then a big break for the Astros and the fact they were able to get Santana. And now with... Two outs. He's one out away from getting out of this thing. I think uh, everybody in that Mariners dugout checking on Santana. We'll keep an eye on him as well. Already playing compromised with that hamstring injury. So it goes a fielder's choice, an E1. And the second out in the rundown. And a line drive to right down. A base hit. Dylan Moore on the first pitch delivers the Mariners in the lead. But I got to sorry B. I got to tell you it's a great piece of hitting right here. He's been behind in all these counts and more went up there knowing hey he's probably going to try to get ahead of me and got a first pitch sinker off the zone and something we talked about just lined it to right field. Look at this. Didn't try to do too much with it. Knew all he needed was a single and a big two out RBI. Flip the scoreboard with Castillo on the mound. The Mariners put two on the board here. And now Cal Raleigh and you made the point Frenchy but let's give some credit to Mitch Hanniger who showed some restraint. You know 
he wanted yeah. to try to score with Santana in the rundown, but how often are you going to get a runner to third base? Exactly. And the way Altuve was chasing down Santana, it was going to be tough for him to get home. So he did a smart thing. He stayed there, and he gave the next guy a chance, and he was able to come through. Moore is a base stealer as well. Valdez checking on him. Dylan Moore does a lot of things well. He runs well, not just the stolen bases, but he puts a lot of pressure on the defense as well. And you know how good Cal Raleigh has been. Most of Raleigh's damage and what has uh, launched him into stardom has come as a left-handed batter. As he fouls that one into the screen. Check in with Matt Weiner. What do you have on Cal Raleigh, Matt? Yeah, this is the first time since September 10th that Raleigh has been in the lineup against a starting left-handed pitcher because he jammed up his left thumb, his catching thumb, sliding into a bag earlier this season. He's been dealing with it for weeks. So basically they've been sitting him against lefties. In the time since, he's had just eight plate appearances against left-handers and is 0 for 8. It's also the reason the Mariners are carrying three catchers right now. Yeah, it's a good call, Matt, the fact that Scott Service has Luis Torrens and Kirk Casale available. Cal Raleigh has not been taking batting practice. It's just been the games. He's had a great run here. It affects him more swinging left-handed than, uh, I beg your pardon, right-handed than left-handed. His last start against a lefty was September 10th. That was against Atlanta. And Matt mentioned 0 for 8, but... He's actually 0 for his last 18 now overall, even prior to the thumb injury. 0 for his last 18 against left-handed pitcher. Well, he's got 28 home runs on the year, including the playoffs, and 25 of those have been against right-handed pitching. And look, the whole idea of batting practice this late in the season, I mean, if it means you staying healthy, getting four or five ABs mm -hmm. during a game, you've got to do what you got to do. But he is such a leader for the Seattle team, they got to have him in the lineup. And you know something else impressive for Dylan Moore. Valdez, one of the best. He's a, uh, hitters are hitting a buck 40 with two outs and runners in scoring position against Valdez. And he was able to break through. Delivered a two-out RBI single. And he is a nuisance right now. Valdez, a number of throws to first base with Raleigh at the plate. Two balls and a strike, and there he goes. And Raleigh into center field, hits it on the line, but right at Jake Myers to end the inning. But the Mariners flip the scoreboard. They get patient with Fromber Valdez. Suarez drew the walk. Hanniger with a key double, an error by Valdez, and Moore delivers with an RBI single. Two to one M's. Back in Houston, get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Saw the family of Jordan Alvarez anxious for their son's next at-bat. It'll be Pena to start it, then Alvarez, and then Alex Bregman. And that one's driven into right center, a base hit. Rodriguez able to cut it off impressively, throws to second up the line, and that'll be a double, a leadoff double for the rookie sensation, Jeremy Pena. Boy, what a first two playoff games for the rookie. Gets the big hit to keep it alive the other game. And right here, look at him drop the hands Ooh. on it and just line that thing to right center. Beautiful approach, knowing he's got that hard sinker. It splits the gap, and Rodriguez has got a good arm. Good hustle here to get in for the double. Really was. That was a triple if Rodriguez doesn't cut that off. Oh, right into your living room. Belly flop. Pena had a big hit to set up Alvarez in game one. And now Alvarez bats. Castillo pitching with a lead now, two to one. Last time up, Castillo got him out in front, right off the end of the bat. Little comebacker. That ended the first inning. Ninety-seven RBIs in the regular season for Alvarez. Thirty-seven homers. 
interesting stat. I was talking to Steve Sparks, a terrific radio man, he and Robert Ford of the Astros, but 12 of the 37 homers for Alvarez this year have come on the changeup. He just took a nasty changeup down. He took two of them in a row. After that's what he got out the first time, and that's what the great hitters do. They make mid-game adjustments like this. Castillo delivers and a swing and a miss. Man, he let it eat three straight changeups by Castillo. Yeah, I don't think he was trying to hit this one off the right field wall oh. or the left field wall of the Crawford boxes. Big man with a violent swing. 6 5, Jordan Alvarez. First time Castillo has pitched out of the stretch in this game. Runner at second, he deals it. Alvarez skies one, left field. Not a lot of room over there, but Moore will put it away for the out. And a big out recorded for Luis Castillo. This postseason, bet $5, win 200 in free bets if your team wins. Download the app and get in on the action. What a massive out for him right there. To get that fly ball to left field and keep Pena at second first. Arguably the hottest hitter in the postseason right now. Alvarez is 0 for 2 against Castillo. Now it's Alex Bregman. Huh. Looks at a strike. Very patient hitter, Bregman. Top five on base percentage in the American League. Castillo's hit on 11 of 13 first pitch strikes. No balls in a strike. One and one. That's the thing the other day. Alex with the one for three game with a walk, that big home run, kind of got lost in the shuffle. But again, this is his first true healthy year since 2019. He's got the lowest chase rate in all the American League at just under 22 percent. Tying run at second base. We play in the fourth inning. And Bregman off the end of the bat, sinking fast, run down by Mitch Hanniger. Got a great jump, makes the play for the out. Two gone here in the fourth inning. And I think that look by Bregman right there, B.A., why did you catch that? Where were you playing me right there? Because that was, that, that was not a deep line drive, and Hanniger, good read coming in. And I guess like anything, at this part sometimes you might tell yourself, I don't want bloopers falling. Yeah. If he hits it over my head, good chance it's a home run or a double. And with Castillo, you got to believe he's going to jam so many hitters that he does get a lot of those little flares to right field. Now the Mariners put the shift on for Kyle Tucker. Responsible for the only run on the board for Houston. Homered with one out in the second. Oh, nice play back there by... Cal Raleigh keeps Pena at second base and that's what makes this Astros lineup so tough and you got Pena at second you get Alvarez you take a deep breath you get Bregman okay I'll try to take a deep breath and all you got to do now is face Cal Tucker becomes quite the gauntlet the Astros lineup really doesn't change one through six it's those bottom three for Dusty Baker that he's always tinkering and playing matchups. Tucker jumps on one again, this time well foul, but an unexpected souvenir up there. <laughs> and a very similar looking swing to what we saw in the second inning. Well, he's going with lift and separate today, I would say, uh, for his approach. That was one of the highest. We said 6.7. Hang time enough for that right field. Got it. Fair caught the ball. He did. He raised his hand. Fair yep. catch. 43 degree launch angle if you like to keep those numbers. That one in the air. Right center field. Had him played there. Excellent positioning. Chalk one up to the Mariners analytics crew. They had him in the right spots. Inning ends. And he's promo code HEAT when you sign up. 
Ready to go here. Game two of this division series in the fifth inning. The Mariners at the plate. A couple of lefties will start it. Adam Frazier and J.P. Crawford. Amber Valdez giving up two runs in the fourth. A walk and two hits. Valdez made a throwing error trying to cut off a run at the plate. That led to the first run. And then Dylan Moore in his first postseason start. A two out base hit and an RBI to put the Mariners ahead. Yeah, give the Mariners some credit right now, these hitters. You can see Valdez every once in a while. They take one of those curveballs, kind of look like, huh. Do you remember in game one, they laid off that fastball on Verlander kind of high, took that pitch away. Right now, they're somewhat taking that curveball away from Valdez. High pitch count last inning as Frazier fouls one away. 26 pitches to get through the fourth. Frazier's hit nine straight going back into the regular season. Of course, he had the huge double, the go ahead double in Toronto on Saturday in game two. Mariner swept the Blue Jays. Frazier has had a down year, but has found it lately. I mentioned the nine game hit streak he's got going. He's hitting 353. And it's got service, as Frenchie mentioned. He likes his defense with a ground ball pitcher and. Certainly likes the hot bat right now. I would imagine Jared Kelnick would be first off the bench. Astros have nothing but right handers in their bullpen. Defensive swing to foul it off. And the count remains at two and two. Dusty made a good point to us today. The other day with Verlander, they faced him seven times now this year. And you think about it, BA, three out of these four series right now, Dodgers. Padres, Braves, Phillies, and here division yeah. rivals. They faced each other at least 19 times coming in. Yeah, so good point. I wonder if they're changing things up a little bit. Two and two. And he got him. Just tied him up. That one had some major run to it. And Valdez works inside on Frazier. Picks up strikeout number four. Look at the movement on that pitch. Almost hit him. Oh. He had an emergency hack on the one before, and that one just tied him up. He's trying to go away. So one away here is Crawford. Huh. Had the first base hit of the game for the Mariners. Doubled off the wall in left field, that short porch in left. Two for five in this division series. A double and a homer. And that one skips in. Ball and a strike. Romber Valdez. Luis Castillo. Two stars from the Dominican Republic going head to head here in game two of this division series. Ah, swing and a miss. Now, rumor has it that Castillo's dreads are natural. Yes. And your impressive reporting tells yeah. us that Fromber Valdez's dreads are not. They're, They're extensions. Ex They're extensions. Yep. Right, I think right before the All-Star game I was reading. Incredible preparation by you, Jeff Francois. Sometimes I do it, you know. Do you remember who wrote the story? I don't. That's I didn't, typically I didn't. what you do when you, yeah, you, you credit the person who actually did the reporting. Yeah, if you're out there, great job. <laughs> he likes the look. He's sticking with it. I did it for the All-Star game. I was ready. It took four hours yeah. to do. I and, mean, uh, Go for it. He said some guys on the team gave him a little bit of hard time, but you know what? If he's going <laughs> to pitch like he is this year, I don't think you can say much. Yeah. It's a good look. I mean, you got to give a little more credit to Castillo, who actually grew it. That, that's his authentic hair as well. He's been working on that for two years. <laughs> but he, he did it a lot to be a lot like Castillo as he gets a swing and a miss, and down goes Crawford. The two lefties go down swinging here to start the fifth inning. You, you know, it's interesting. Uh, he's back in the windup right now. And he's got two strikeouts now. The one time we've seen him really struggle, B.A., is out of the stretch. Even the one pitch that Rodriguez hit hard up the middle now, too, they made that beautiful play. Right now, out of the windup. 
He is in a groove. Out of the stretch, the Mariners are two for four with a walk, two hits, a double. Back to the top of the order, Julio Rodriguez. Swung at the first pitch his last time up. And he's on the first one here, center field coming in. Myers gives way to Tucker, and that will end the inning. Three up and three down for Framber Valdez. Castillo back on the hill now. In case you haven't heard, the game was postponed tonight between the Guardians and the Yankees. They will play it on Friday afternoon, 1 o'clock at Yankee Stadium. We'll hit the air at 12.30. Let's take a look at our DraftKings and VR betting same game parlay. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up with the promo code HEAT. Oh, by the way, uh, B.A. and uh, Frenchie, the forecast for New York on Friday, sunny and 66, which does not matter to you guys because you'll be teeing it up at Sahali and knocking down trees. Back that's to you. Right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Bouncing ball. Yuli Gurriel out to short. Ernie Nofe. Ernie Nofe. What a way here in this fifth inning. And uh, no forecast needed for it the entirety of this particular division series because we are in retractable roof land and I am the number one proponent of a retractable uh, roof. Yeah, uh, you know, and lucky too because this series, both ballparks are absolutely gorgeous. This place, we've seen it for years now in the playoffs, but it, it's going to be exciting for fans to see T-Mobile Park in yeah. Seattle. That place will be rocking. If you have not experienced T-Mobile Park, you are in for a treat. It is... A beautiful park. It is loud. It is fun, and it is going to be rocking Saturday and Sunday. Uh, before we get into this inning a little bit, uh, Ernie mentioned the postponement. Yankees Guardians. Do you think it hurts the Guardians, or do you think it helps the Guardians to have that extra day? Where do you stand on that? I will tell you. I see both ways, and we've talked about this for a little bit. I've heard other people's opinions. For me. If I'm a Yankee, knowing I've only got to face Shane Bieber one time in a five-game series. Good point. Because he was so good game one against um, Tampa. Mm -hmm. And really all year. But Ledmus Diaz skies one into center field. Rodriguez routine. He'll put it away. Two up, two down for Castillo here in the fifth. This is one heck of a script. Looking for a little bit of history. Ground ball. Kim will go to first. It's their first no hitter. But to add to that, B.A., Cleveland's got a great bullpen, too. Yeah. But I, if it goes to five games, you're playing four straight days now. So it will be interesting to see how that lines up. I love what Dusty Baker said. Talking about the layoff for the top two division winners. The Yankees are in that category. Swinging a miss from Jake Myers. He said, you rush faster than you wear out. And for the Yankees now, I mean, they've played one game in what's going to be eight days. Good point. So... Yankees win game one of that series, and they'll be back at it tomorrow afternoon. Castillo trying to make this a quiet inning. Bottom of the order. He's got the first two retired. One ball, one strike on Jake Myers, who struck out his first time up. And a swing and a miss. And this is what you're talking about. Still, you know, mid-50 pitch count. Still pumping 98, 99, 100. There's about seven, eight pitchers in the game that you can truly say are just built different. He's one of them. He gets stronger as he goes. One, two, and he slings a fastball. Two and two the count. Five in a row retired by Castillo. Jeremy Pena led off with a double in the fourth. He stranded him right there as the tying run. Mariners flip the scoreboard with two in the fourth. Two and two, and that one is in there. Called strike three. One, two, three inning. Castillo getting stronger. He's got six in a row. He's retired 11 of 12. And the Mariners ace. One Mariners. And we're going to take a look, B.A., about Valdez. Usually this is a guy who's been 53% sinkers on the year and 28% curveballs. Totally flipped the script today, throwing 42% curveballs, just a little less than that sinker, and only a one changeup today from Valdez. So, again, you face these guys so many times, changing it up a little bit. 74 pitches. He's got seven swings and misses. 
And uh, those nine cut fastballs, which is kind of the new wrinkle for him this year. And now let's see how he goes third time through the batting order. He retired Julio Rodriguez to end the fifth. Now he's got Ty France. Top of the order that was so good in game one for the Mariners. Valdez has held them hitless, although Suarez is walk with one out in the fourth. Got the rally started. Seattle scored twice and took the lead. France on the ground. Jeremy Pena got a great arm. And France is retired. One away here. So five in a row for Frommer Valdez now. One out in the sixth. Just about everybody on their feet. Bases loaded and the pitch. Deep right field and out of here. Walk off Homer. Another ground ball out for Fromber Valdez. And here is Eugenio Suarez with one out in the sixth inning. This is the kind of game we thought we might see Tuesday. In game one, turned out to be a wild affair. A lot of runs, a lot of offense. Never imagined that uh, Justin Verlander would not pitch in the fifth inning. Gave up six runs and ten hits. But the Astros took him off the hook. Terrific offensive performance by Houston. Valdez now two good pitches right off the bat to Swords. This is where it kind of fell apart in that fourth inning for him. He got France to ground out to start the inning and then walked Suarez and when he went to that stretch really wasn't the same guy until now again like you said retired five in a row out of the windup or four out of the windup one to end the fourth inning which was hit hard by Cal Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Oh and to the count on Suarez. Ah swing at a miss. Got him to chase. Suarez strikes out. Number six for Valdez. He's riding that big fastball in there. He's sitting curveball, and all of a sudden, look at that sinker at 96. Mm. TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. Six in a row for Frommer Valdez. Here's Mitch Hanniger. First ball swinging, comes up empty. Curveball. Look at the bite on this pitch. I mean, it starts letter high, and like I said, bottom part of the zone, and it never gets there. Every guy out in front. Two to one game. Astros scored first. Tucker homered in the second. Two runs in the fourth for Seattle. And Hanniger fouls it away. Hanniger was a big part of that. Two run fourth inning. He doubled down the left field line just inside the bag at third. Valdez has him 0 2, taking a little extra time between pitches. Not the fastest worker in the world, especially when the stakes are like this. Hanniger will be a free agent at season's end, a big power bat. Finally healthy. Missed 98 days with a left ankle injury this season. Had back surgery in the pandemic shortened season. He missed most of 2019, the year before. He has hardly played. He's been there for the worst of times in Seattle, their 90 loss season. And he is so happy to finally be healthy. You see his games by season. It was a workhorse in 2018 and then had a good year in 21. Thought he was back, but the ankle injury this year really shut him down. Had a hot finish though. And he takes one. That was close. A little bit high. Jensen Visconti's had a good zone. The home plate umpire. I don't think he's gassed up change up on that pitch. He was. I think he, he threw it hard. It was a hard chain. 92. 3 2 pitch. And he misses with a breaking ball. And Hanniger is on again. Two out walk. 
Back into the stretch goes Fromber Valdez. Carlos Santana got the uniform dirty, was in a rundown. Good thing for him, he is the designated hitter. It's been almost 40 minutes since he's had to do anything. He caught his breath by now. <laughs> I think he's okay. You'd, you'd have known right away if the hamstring was going to tighten up. So it's a good sign that he's back in there. And he drives one down the right field line. That's down. And that'll one hop off the fence. Hanniger on his way to third will stop there. Throw goes to second. And a belly flop double for Santana. With two outs, the Mariners get a walk and a double. And they threaten to add on here in the sixth inning. Now we talked about Santana from the right side of the plate much better. And here it gets the first pitch away. Look at it, just drives it to right field. That when they have been successful outside of Hanniger's hit down the third baseline, it's been driving that ball to right field. And that's what Scott Service talked to us about today. He said, I'm going in to talk to the hitters meeting and tell them, you got to go opposite field. Just a beautiful piece of hitting by Carlos Santana. Took the collar in game one, was 0 for 4. Josh Miller. Astros pitching coach out with a word with Valdez. So you brought it up, Frenchie, in the fourth inning. So adding him up now from the stretch, Fromber Valdez has allowed three hits and six at bats and two walks. He's allowed five base runners in the eight batters he's faced from the stretch. Yeah, he has struggled. You see Hector Neris, who has not been in yet in this series, but you can tell they're going to, I don't know how long of a hook Valdez is going to have be a third time through the lineup he's a 282 guy whereas he's 215 first time and 178 second time through the lineup I wonder I just wonder if Dusty Baker wants to keep Valdez on the mound at least through Cal Raleigh then you have the two lefties I mean it is you're in that tricky spot right now as a manager it's tough but you also got a loaded bullpen yeah. you got the best bullpen in baseball this is the key at bat. Dylan Moore drove in a run to, with two outs with a single to right his last time up. And look at Valdez in the windup with runners at second and third. Might have had something to do with Miller's visit to the mound. Hey, if you're comfortable. Yeah, you're right. From the Why windup. not? Moore put the Mariners in front in the fourth. A short little stroke in the right field, the humble approach. Well, and to me, if you're letting him throw to Moore here, there's a base open, so you don't have to give him anything to hit. But surely, if you let him do this, you've got to let him throw to Cal Raleigh, right? right. From this side right. of the plate. Different, different hitter from the yes. right side. Compromise with a thumb injury. I'm with you. 2 0 the count. Second and third, two outs. Mariners lead two to one and a chance to add on. Wow, right down the middle, but it was a curveball. More fouls it away. That might have been the one to hit, though, even Man. though that was a curveball. That's one of the few true hangers he's thrown today. Three straight curveballs. If you remember, he gave up the hit on a first pitch sinker to him last time. The 2 1. Misses with this one. Four consecutive curves. Wheels are churning for Dusty Baker. Saw Naris in the bullpen. Got matchups. That are preferred for Valdez next. Here's a big pitch. Three and one. Two men are out, and Moore will be granted timeout. Tell you what, if he walks in here, though, I, that might be it. He might go with Think Maris so. thinking that Valdez has given him everything he's got. See what he's got. And a swing and a foul. Fastball center cut. 
And he fouls it into the screen. Now it's three and two with two outs. Well, if I'm more, I'm sitting up there right now, and I know I just got a 3-1 fastball. But his bread and butter has been that yes. curveball. His 124 strikeouts on the year, you got to believe he's coming with it. But watch for the fastball, too. Oh, thanks. That doesn't help. You're a guest hitter. You just exposed yourself. <laughs> Can't hear the pitch calm. You couldn't tell that sometimes when I hit it. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just being polite. <laughs> Thanks. Valdez going to take an extra. I don't think he can hear. Here, so I can't hear. You can have five pitch calm receivers, pitcher, catcher, and then three other position players. Usually it's the second third and shortstop that wear those. That's why I see Bregman listening in as well. well he's got the one he wants. Trying to shoot that two seamer down the line and if he throws the curveball you try to hit it up the middle. Full count. Two outs. Second and third. Here he comes and it is outside for a ball. You're right with him Frenchy. Curveball missed. Yeah. And Dusty Baker has a decision to make and he's on his way. So even though the matchups favor Fromber Valdez, he's at the end of his tank, according to Dusty Baker. And now you're going to allow Cal Raleigh to turn around to his better side. Remember, the Astros do not have a left handed reliever on their postseason roster. Valdez will exit. The bases are loaded. Pitching change at Minute Maid Park. As we go inside the booth, presented by Toyota. Brian Anderson with Jeff Francoeur. So, a big move right here. Dusty Baker pulling the plug on Framber Valdez. This comes down to I trust my bullpen guy more than Valdez. Valdez versus Raleigh's the better matchup. Yeah. Cal Raleigh's a good off speed hitter, and Naris has got that split, but he wants a fresh arm. And they're, they're gonna, he's going to take a chance here. Big moment in the yeah. game. I mean, this is going to be what you talk about post game. Cal Raleigh will be turned around, so he's going to hit left-handed now. 24 of his 27 home runs in the regular season coming as a left-handed batter. His home run in the postseason against Alec Manoa as a left-handed batter. And uh, that was, I'm sure, for Cal Raleigh, a feel-good moment to not have to bat right-handed. He's dealing with this thumb injury. Hector Neris in his first postseason. All the years with the Phillies, he was there and finally getting a chance first career postseason. As I said, be one of the best splits in all of baseball. But Cal Raleigh likes that ball low and to get the bat head out front. So, again, this, I think, is more Dusty Baker wanting a fresh arm. Ooh, moment of truth right here. Bases loaded, two outs. Valdez got the first two out of the six, then walk, double, walk. And Cal Raleigh, who has come up with so many big moments already, four for four in spots like this, and that splitter had him way out in front. Well, you got to believe Nares wasn't taking a chance giving him 95 96 first pitch, and he shows it to him. Look at the depth of that thing go down. I mean, that is his bread and butter, and when you come in in a situation like this, go with your best. Yep. Here's the 0 1. Bounces it in and that's the other part of the equation by the way The skill of Martin Maldonado and these pitchers know even with the bases loaded and a runner 90 feet away You can afford to bury one because of You know, they're, you know they're gonna do that it reminds me of Wainwright Chris Carpenter with that big curveball with the Cardinals You knew Yachty block it and that's how they feel with Maldonado behind the dish Got to be some nerves cooking here for Naris. 475 major league games his first playoff appearance was the longest streak among pitchers in major league baseball Hanniger Santana and more on the bases Raleigh did he lay off he did not can't check it third base umpire James Hoy raises the thumb on him and it's one and two to Cal Raleigh I feel like he definitely went there and this is the tough thing you sit there and say fastball you probably Be able to just blow him away right here, but when you have that pitch Stuff to second-guess yourself 
Two to one Mariners. Two outs in the sixth. Let's see what Naris has in mind for Cal Raleigh here. He delivers and Raleigh pulls one on the ground. Shift is on. No problem for Pena. That's the inning. And Naris showing some emotion. The MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Hyundai. It's your journey. Astros strand the bases loaded. Hector Neris leaves three of Valdez's runners out there. High fives all around, knowing that was a big moment. Now the table turns to Castillo. First ball swinging, Maldonado fouls it away. So it'll be 9 1 and 2 now for the Astros. Altuve on deck, Jeremy Pena. And if anybody gets on, Jordan Alvarez. What a job Hector Neris did coming in. All splits, and again, I think that's more of. I'm throwing out the analytics on that one. Dusty saw his starter. He knows him well and said, you know what? I need a fresh arm. And there's his first postseason appearance. Great job. It'll be one out recorded for Naris. That's a good work. A day's work right there as Brian Abreu will start a clean inning, it looks like, in the seventh. A swing at a miss. Castillo gets it to a 1 2 count with the Astros catcher at the plate. He's letting that fastball rip right now, isn't he? It's so easy with it. You think about Jordan Alvarez's swing, his power swing. It's the pitching version of that. Yeah. It's just easy good point. cheese. The 1 2. A swing at a miss. Down he goes. Just a darting fastball at 98. Six strikeouts. For Castillo, he's getting stronger, Frenchy. Well, we saw Valdez throw more curveballs today, and really, what you're seeing from Castillo, look at this, look at the sinkers today. It's up 10 percent. He is really letting that fastball sinker combo go, throwing less sliders and about the same changeup. So he's really just he is liking the way that fastball is coming out. He's rising it with the four seamer and running it into these righties. He's been in triple digits a number of times. A little chin music for Jose Altuve. Look out. You hear those go by. That's a great shot. Castillo. Threads one for a strike. One ball, one strike to count. Altuve still looking for his first hit. He did draw a draw walk in game one. He's 0 for 2 today and 0 for 6 in the series. He's made two sparkling defensive plays in this game, and my goodness. I mean, he almost took that out of <laughs> Cal Raleigh's catcher's mitt. You know what's impressive, too? If you watch this box on these sinkers, it's at the bottom of the zone almost every pitch right now. I mean, he is he is not elevating that sinker at all, keeping it low, and these Astros hitters having a tough time. One of the great pitchers in the game, Luis Castillo. And he deals, and Altuve skies one. A mile high, just misses the roof. Raleigh's under it, and he makes a catch. That was way up there. Two up, two down for Castillo. Chance to remind you that if you wonder what the players say on the field, or if you want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball, or if you're interested in baseball culture in Latin America, you can check out MLB Originals at MLB.com slash originals. Two outs for Castillo. Only two base runners today. Tucker homered in the second. Pena had a leadoff double in the fourth. He's only pitched out of the stretch to three batters in this game. And you wonder that bullpen for Seattle is going to sit down as long as he's doing this. I mean, he's only getting 69th pitch coming up here. I mean, I got to imagine if this is your rock, this is your guy, right? He's going until he shows you he can't go. No question. Yeah, you don't think about shutting him down, maybe come back in game five, three days. None of that matters at this point. We think about it. I mean, we're looking ahead, but 
Scott Service, they have to win this game. Yeah. You know you got to go back to Seattle one and one. Home games coming for the Mariners. And a win today by Seattle would guarantee two home games at T-Mobile Park. That'll be no picnic for the Astros. Jordan Alvarez looms large on deck. Jeremy Pena, the 2-1. Jam shot, long run, Frazier coming in, Rodriguez, and that's going to fall, a base hit. Jeremy Pena, two of the three Astros hits. A little flare falls, and it'll bring up Alvarez now. That ball went in the air, and you know Castillo was praying for it to get caught. He wanted to face Alvarez with nobody on base, and it just was right in the middle of him. I mean, Rodriguez... I don't think would get that even if Frazier wasn't coming on and it was just past Frazier. Almost identical to the little flare that J.P. Crawford had in the wild card series against the Blue Jays that produced three runs. Now it's Alvarez tying run at first. Alvarez the go ahead run. We play in the sixth. I mean, every time this man takes a swing, I feel like it's about to be yeah. squared up somewhere. Even his swings and misses draw the <laughs> yeah. oohs and the ahs. He is worthy of that number 44 on his back. That's what it was like when Reggie Jackson was in his prime at the plate in big games. And that one's hit well deep in the left field. And Alvarez has done it again. Oh, my goodness. He has put the Astros in front. A two-run home run makes it 3-2 to two Houston. I mean, that deserves a curtain call, right? <laughs> I mean, got to be. Wow. You have a guy absolutely mowing down, and he just drives this into left center. Castillo back to work. Bregman takes a ball. I mean, the level that Alvarez is playing right now and hitting right now, delivering time after time. Bregman pops it up. This will get him out of the inning. It's going to be Frazier who will make the call and the catch. A flare by Pena and Jordan Alvarez playing home run derby in front of his family from Cuba. He does it again. Alvarez visits the Crawford boxes and the Houston Astros are back in front. The massive home run. All day change ups and then surprise him with a fastball here, try to beat him with the second fastball. And this guy is so locked in, BA. Just drives it in the left field stands. Unbelievable. Flips the scoreboard. Alvarez has eight home runs in his last 24 games. He's got home runs in each of the first two of this division series. Now the Astros have a lead, and Brian Abreu will take over on the mound. Boy, how did that swing so quickly? Mariners had bases loaded. Naris gets out of the inning. And then with two outs. A big home run by Jordan Alvarez to put the Astros in front. Mariners bottom of their order. Adam Frazier. Yeah, Brady threw in game one. One and two thirds had three strikeouts. This is where that day off in between. Gives Dusty Baker some options, multiple inning options if he needed it, which he took advantage of in game one. And Abreu is right back out there. Unable to check his swing. Frazier in swing mode. That almost hit him.
One ball, two strikes. And Frazier pulls it foul. Just the timeliness of the home runs, the clutch nature of Alvarez. I mean, these are big league hitters. He's one of the elite hitters in the game. Got a chance to finish maybe top three or four in the MVP voting, Alvarez. But what he's doing in the moments that he's doing them against the pitchers. Yeah. Best in the league. One and two. Frazier up the middle on a hop. That's Bregman over on the shift, and he makes a play for the out. Jordan Alvarez making his way to left field, and uh, a huge ovation up there in the Crawford boxes. And Matt Weiner, it means even more to him that his family has been able to get to the United States from Cuba. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There are no prouder parents in the park than Augustine Alvarez Salazar and his wife, My Lynn, who are here for game one. They're back today as he continues to light this place up. And for that family, it is a well-earned celebration. Jordan first left Cuba to pursue his career as a teenager, but when he was signed by the Dodgers in 2016, they were unable to follow him. It's extremely difficult for Cubans to obtain visas to leave the country. So Jordan didn't see his family for about three years. For the last two years, the Astros have been working to make that happen. Negotiating with immigration officials from the governments involved, the team was able to help Jordan's parents and brother Yonder reach first the Dominican Republic, then Mexico, and finally obtain a temporary visa to come to the U.S. They saw their first MLB game here on August 23rd. They're now living with Jordan here in Houston. He told me today having his family here is a gift. And that walk-off moment was something he says he couldn't imagine even in a dream. Might not be a coincidence that he is free and easy. He's had a great year, but he has been at his best here in the last month or so. I know this. I'm Dusty Baker. I'm making room for those three on the team playing to head right. to Seattle. I, I don't know who's off. Somebody's off. Somebody's off. 3-2 Houston, one away in the seventh. See if the Mariners have a response. It's a brave, nasty slider. Good take there by Crawford. Crawford homered yesterday against Verlander. Had the first hit of the game for the Mariners. A double off the left field fence up and over Jordan Alvarez. That came in the third. Three and one. And missed inside. And that's a walk. So the Mariners get a base runner. And Crawford is aboard for the second time. Luis Castillo challenging Jordan Alvarez. That's what the aces do. There's no work around. We asked Scott Service, uh, as you see the numbers on Abreu, if you're in a position to face Jordan Alvarez again, he goes, well, we can't let him beat us. <laughs> yeah, but then, as you said, you got the, one of the best pitchers in baseball on the mound, and, you know, he, he hit his P. He's held him at bay today. Got an easy ground ball back to him and a pop-up. But look, the Mariners are used to this spot. They've played so many one-run yes. games this year, B.A., and that's what Scott Service said. And we've been on the heartbreak side, and we've also broke hearts the other way. So there's still eight outs left for this Mariners team. And now you go from one number 44 to another. And Julio Rodriguez. Maldonado is going to make his way to the mound here. That's a couple of sliders that have missed badly for Abreu. That's his bread and butter. Rafael Montero getting ready in the Astros bullpen. And that visit might have been sent by Dusty Baker to buy a little time for Montero. Give him a breather. Astros bullpen, the best in the majors. As far as ERA, we did not see their closer in game one, Ryan Presley. Right now it's Abreu in the spotlight. A strike in there. You know, sometimes too, it's it's the bloop. If you think about Alvarez, he was able to get up to bat because of the bloop by Pena. The same thing the other day when he hit the walk off. Pena single up the middle with two strikes, kept the game alive. Julio Rodriguez. 
0 for 3 today. Swing and a miss. Chase one that time. One and two now. I think he was trying to pull one over the Crawford boxes on that pitch. Brian Abreu facing the 21 year old Julio Rodriguez. Going to be the rookie of the year in the American League. He was six months old last time the Mariners were in a postseason game. Led all rookies in the AL and homers with 28. Also set a Mariners franchise record for rookies. Past the great Alvin Davis, a former rookie of the year as well. The one two. He got away with one there. That was one that backed up right down the middle on a slider. Look at this. Trying to go away to finish him. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez was two for four in game one. He drove in a couple of runs, had a double and a triple. Was robbed of a hit by Altuve in the third. Crawford at first, the tying run. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Abreu with a slider. His first strikeout. Two outs in the inning. Just kept going away and away. Getting him to chase farther off the plate. Got the second out of the inning. Dusty Baker on his way to the mound. Ty France is coming up. Abreu facing three batters. He'll exit with a runner at first. And a pitching change here at Minute Maid Park. Montero coming in. Mariners Astros, game two of this American League Division Series. They do not give out MVPs for Division Series, but we certainly know who's in the running right now. If they did, as we take a look at our Geico game summary. For bundling made easy. Just go to Geico, uh, Geico.com. 3 2 our score. And it was Jordan Alvarez with the two run home run with two outs off Castillo in the sixth inning. And so now Dusty Baker back to his bullpen. He's got two outs with a runner at first. Ty France coming up, and here is Montero. And Montero pitched an inning the other day. You know, thinking about that game summary, Dusty Baker told Matt Weiner down there it might come down to a couple home runs. And that's exactly what's happened today. Kyle a, Tucker and Alvarez. There's a guy who can hit him too. Ty France. Career highs and homers and RBIs this year. Montero is the guy that gets the toughest outs prior to the ninth inning. Presley is the closer. And pretty defined roles here. Guessing Dusty Baker, knowing that France is not a chaser, he's not a guy that will swing at a slider in the dirt, likes the matchup better with Montero. Crawford still pinned to first base. And France doesn't bite. Gets a count in his favor, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, Abreu in more is that two-pitch guy, and more than that, slider happy. And so I think this is trying to bring him, and he's got the fastball sink, the changeup, and slider Montero. But so far, France, as you've seen, good discipline. France had three hits, drove in two runs in game one, had an RBI double in the fourth inning of game one. Huh. Makes him throw a strike, got a generous call right there. And it's two and one now. France has a little history against Montero. He's two for four. Empty bullpen certainly means Castillo's coming back out. Still got the game face on. Astros have Tucker, Guriel, and Diaz coming up. Two balls and a strike. Montero. Looks like he has his good command because he is right in that slot every time. 
he is, but, uh, you know, it, it's showing. It's just up. It's just a little bit off the plate, and he's not getting that pitch. He got the 2-0 the strike call. Three balls and a strike. And he goes there again, and he gets a call this time. So if you're noticing right there, he's yeah. getting the call, but those two that he got him are down in the zone. They're middle part. The other three that he's called have been high. It's generous. Ooh. It's, it's odd to say in a 3-1 count he's showing good command, but he's throwing it right where he wants to. He is, and he, he got away with one there. Now you're going to have action with Crawford taking off. Francis got a beef. Giving him two strikes now. Full count. Crawford will get the head start. Two outs. He's the tying run at first. There he goes. And France watches one go by. Draws the walk. And now it gets real interesting for the Mariners. Got a slugger coming up. And Eugenio Suarez. Now the tying run at second base. Go ahead run at first. And Suarez who is already found the Crawford boxes in this series. This was from game one. Suarez had a seventh inning home run and a two for four day. We talk about so many back and forth moments in postseason games. Uh, the momentum has been both ways quite a bit today. Montero deals low. Suarez got some memories against Montero. A lot of patience at the plate. Frenchie's He's 0 for 4, but he has walked five times against this pitcher. Suarez has great power to all fields. First and second. Two outs. Suarez trying to shoot one to right, fouls it away. Yeah, ran that sinker in there. Suarez, you know, only a 236 hitter during the regular season, but this is the moment. 298 with runners in scoring position. And so far this postseason, two for four. Never know about batting practice. We mentioned this earlier, but he was driving pitch after pitch into the right center field gap in BP, hitting rockets to right center. Trying to stay inside that ball. Montero delivers. That one's hit well to left. Alvarez closing in. He makes the catch. Suarez hit it like a bullet. But right at Alvarez. Montero escapes. Mariner strand two. They've left five on in the last two innings. Alvarez right in the middle of it all. Bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Jordan Alvarez has given the Astros the lead. A two-run home run with two outs in the sixth. And now Castillo back on the mound. Kyle Tucker will lead off for Houston. Tucker homered in the second inning. Started the scoring today. Mariners got two in the fourth. First run came in on a throwing error by Fumber Valdez. And then Dylan Moore had an RBI. And then Jordan Alvarez just turned over the board back in the Astros' favor. Scott Service rides Castillo here, pitching in a seventh inning. Tucker Guriel and Aledmas Diaz scheduled to hit. It's funny, this is a right handed heavy Astros lineup, and who's done the damage today? The two big lefties yeah. in this Astros lineup. And both are star worthy. Alvarez, potential MVP candidate. Tucker, I'd say both of those guys are maybe two of the most underrated great hitters in the game right now. They're on the list anyway. Tucker had a 30 100 season this year, drove at 107, hit his 30th home run in the final Tuesday of the season. Lashes away was late. Gives you an idea of Castillo's fastball still at this stage of the game. 
Tucker golfed one out of here in the second. Count is full. Castillo delivers and it's fouled away. 99. Still got it. That's two hard fastballs now. I wonder if he's going to throw something off speed, but Tucker with his swing path if it's low to be right with his barrel. Yeah. What's Correll do next? A ah, swing and a foul tip right into the middle Raleigh. A strikeout for Castillo. That's number seven for Luis Castillo. Yeah, he wasn't going to take a chance there, Brian, of throwing a slider or a changeup down and in and letting him pull it. Went high heater. His fastball has been enough for every hitter in the lineup except Jordan Alvarez. Which speaks more to Alvarez and where he is right now as a hitter than everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Willie Guriel with one away in the seventh. Huh. This part of the lineup for the Astros six through nine, 0 for eight, with four strikeouts. All the K's. In this group coming from the bottom two hitters as Guriel fouls it back and it's a ball and two strikes. Guriel's amazing story. 22nd pro season, 15 with the Cuban national team. And then one season in Japan and of course now the last seven here. Talked to him today, PA, made me aware before the game that we played against each other when we were 18 years old in Cuba with the U.S. Junior National Team against Cuba. You told him he was one of your favorite players as a kid. Exactly. <laughs> He's down there and you're up here still. Yep. The one two, Uriel stings one to center field. And routine for Rodriguez. A lot of room out there. Two outs in the Houston seventh. Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. Castillo with two gone in the seventh inning. They'll face Aledmus Diaz. There's double barrel action in the Mariners' bullpen. Brash and Munoz. Munoz is, I would guess, the guy the Mariners take the lead eventually. Saw both of those pitchers in game one. Munoz gave up the two run home run to Bregman. Diaz, a struggling hitter right now. Dusty Baker playing a, a little bit of a hunch. Felt like he was a better option against the high velocity fastball of Castillo. But Diaz won for his last 22. The group of hitters that Dusty Baker can choose from down at the bottom of that order. I think they're all going to get a shot. And whoever takes advantage of it will probably let it ride out. Well, yeah, I agree. I think if Mancini would have got a couple hits that game one, he's probably getting the DH today. But I uh, agree. He's got Dubon, McCormick, Vasquez, you know, but with him being the other catcher. And he's waiting for somebody to get out. Got him out in front of a changeup. One and two the count. Pitch counted 91 for Castillo. Every pitcher knows they got to control the bottom of the order against the Astros, and Castillo has done that. Diaz turns that one around. You know, yeah, I was looking down there in that Astros pen and I did not see anybody hot. So Montero is coming back for the eighth. Gave up a walk. Got the out. Line drive out to end the inning. Mariners have Hanniger, Santana, and more coming up. 
That's four, five, and six in their batting order. Scott Service does have Jared Kelnick, a left-handed bat. Probably be his his best left-handed bat off the bench today. Did not start the game in left, but had some great ABs yeah. in game one. Two hits. Here's a one-two. Two-two now. Pitch number eight coming. Let's see what Castillo dials up. Two and two, and a swing and a foul. You notice Craig Biggio didn't budge back there. He's a gamer. Everybody else flying out of the way. Biggio stared it right in the eyes. Did Bagwell move or did he game? I'm not sure. I think he's out of here. No, there he is. There is. I don't think he moved. Two legends. Biggio and Bagwell. 2-2. Two, two. Three balls, two strikes. Let's see what he throws here. Almost all day, every time he's had to make a pitch, it's been that rare back. Two-seamer. Jake Myers do next. Number eight hitter. Pitch number nine. Diaz. That's a fair ball. Hits the sidewall. Crawford runs it down. Diaz on his way to second base with a double just inside the bag. And just past De Eugenio Suarez, who was guarding the line anyway. What a big hit for Eledmus Diaz. Extends the inning. More pitches for Castillo. Just over the bag. It's the right call. Yeah, what an AP. Not off a lot of tough pitches and got out in front of this slider. Nine pitch AP and he battles for a double. I led Miss Diaz. Extends the inning and extends the outing here for Castillo. Jake Myers, the scheduled hitter, going to pull him back. David Hensley, who had a, a key plate appearance in game one, officially went down as a hit by pitch, but he worked a count into a full count and then was brushed on the jersey by a pitch. This is all against Paul Seawald as it was unfolding in the ninth, and Jordan Alvarez still, you know, three and four batters away, but Hensley had a big at bat in his first career postseason plate appearance. You talk about getting thrown into the fire. Not many at bats in the big leagues. You get that. Now you get to come in and face Castillo with the runner on base. Shows you Dusty likes him, likes his approach. He told us that first day we talked about his team. Runner at second, two away. Huge insurance run for the Astros. <laughs> and Castillo docks the edge with a fastball. Hensley at 6'6 six, six, and plays some second base, too. One of the tallest second basemen you'll ever see. I'm guessing Hensley's only in the hit. You got Chaz McCormick to play center. Mauricio Dubon could play center, but it, it is the Nastro's lead, and you yeah. want a good defensive outfielder out there. Castillo delivers a strike in there. Hensley's patience has put him in a one two hole against Castillo. You're not seeing this in triple A. I can tell you that. Look at that wow, man. sinker at 97. The tails on these fastballs. Just hardly see it with that kind of velocity. One ball two strikes two outs. And Hensley just shortening up. Trying to punch the ball into right field. Stays alive. I mean, he's emptying the tank now. He knows he's smelling he's the in. end right here and he's letting it go. He knows it is 
imperative to keep this game at a one run game. Slider usage down today compared to what it is normally. A lot of fastballs. Been pouring them in against Hensley as well. Mariners have some thumpers coming up in the eighth inning. They got the middle of their order. Castillo trying to get him there in a 3 2 game. Here he comes. So Hensley's got the right approach. I mean, that looks ugly, what, but that's take, the way you got to do it. Try to take out your guys in the dugout? <laughs> Is that, that the approach? Dusty Baker was standing uh, in game. Yeah, one. man, that was when he's going for the rally. He's now wisely he's wisely moved in. Yeah, he's behind the net. <laughs> a little smarter today. <laughs> That's the thing right here, you know, do you throw that off speed pitch and speed up his bat? One ball, two strikes again. Yeah, missed with a fastball. This is kind of what he did the other day. Hensley against Seawall got down in that count and he worked it all the way back to 3 2. And that. Two seamer ran in and nipped his jersey. It's going to be a 24 pitch inning here for Castillo. Certainly his last. He deals it. Bouncing ball to short. Crawford is there. And that will retire the side. They made him work. And Castillo, likely at the end of the line, is going to continue on as we go to the eighth inning. Came on, got the final out, did issue a walk, then got a line drive out by Suarez. He'll face Mitch Hanniger. One run game. Game two of this division series Astros lead on a two run home run by Jordan Alvarez in the sixth inning. Mitch Hanniger had a double and a run scored in the fourth the two run fourth the only run scoring inning for the Mariners. And then Hanniger drew a walk in the sixth. Little roll over ground ball Bregman cuts it off throws on the run nice play for out number one. Got to ask you, Frenchie, as we take a look at this play by Alex Bregman, steady third baseman. But we're uh, kind of running through the personnel available to Dusty Baker. And the two guys that come to mind right now, Ryan Stanek and uh, Presley, Ryan Presley, the closer, they're both in the bullpen. And Presley's just started throwing now. So it makes it, you wonder. It, Stanek it, had a great year. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, two and one with a one, 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 five. Is that good? I mean, uh, it's high velocity, 98, 99. So you, you wonder what's going on there. On the flip side for Dusty, he's got a lot of weapons down there he can use if, if, even if a guy's down. Santana's kind of been a guy to get some big hits for the Mariners this year. Santana turns around, hits left handed. The switch hitter had a double his last time up. Mauricio Dubon takes over in center field for the Astros. Huh. And there's a strike. Santana, most of his power is a left handed batter. Batting average and OPS a lot lower as a lefty. Mariners are a swing of the bat away from tying this game. Santana takes a ball. Couple back to back change ups after the first pitch two seamer. Swing and a miss. Had him out in front of a changeup. And that's the thing with we talked about having no lefties in that bullpen. You know, Montero lefties are hitting 158 compared to righties hitting 225. So a lot of these guys have splits and changes make it tough on these left-handed hitters. Two and two to Santana. Ground ball foul. Montero, the guy that gets the toughest outs. He had been a starter early in his career and then was able to hang around as a journeyman reliever. Never really put 
all of it together for the Astros but he found it at age 31 this season and he has earned the trust of Dusty Baker. Fourth batter faced Santana takes a ball. Now after a first pitch two seamer all change ups now to Santana. And I bet and he's a tough guy if you try to trick him and get one past him because such a disciplined hitter has the most postseason experience by a long shot of any of the Mariners players three and two and he takes a ball. Wow those two pitches he just laid off impressive Carlos Santana draws a one out walk now the tying run is aboard and the wheels in motion for Dusty Baker. Yeah another change up down and you can see Santana great discipline draws a walk and now Santana's day is done. Fresh legs are in Taylor Trammell. And Scott Service is going to go to his bench twice. Got the pinch runner in Trammell. And the pinch hitter coming up is Jared Kelnick. You know, Kelnick had a great first game. Scott Service actually talked about it today. That it was tough not to put him in there because he swung the bat. And we had a chance, B.A., to talk to him during the workout. On Monday, and I thought it was interesting because he said, Look, I know it hasn't been a great year, but you can have moments in these games like this where you can flip the script. Definitely an opportunity here to do that. And you know, even though at the high level, at, at the major league level, it, it did look like a bad year for him, he did a lot of hitting in AAA. So yeah. he has had success. He's found the barrel. Had two hits in game one. He gets his chance. What a spot for the rookie right here. Scott Service. Going with two youngsters. This team has been led by young players all season long. Tremel with great wheels at first base. Kelnick hitting for Dylan Moore and a check on Tremel. Mariners are without two of their outfielders an outfielder and a utility man. Jesse Winker, a neck injury. He will not return to the Mariners. Sam Haggerty. The groin injury, he's also done for the postseason. That was a big loss. Haggerty gave him a lot. And with those two injuries, the two guys that are in the spotlight right now are on the postseason roster and in spots like this, Kelnick and Trammell. Well, and Kelnick right here, if you're a student of the game, you sat there and watched Santana's at bat and you saw all those changeups and what did he do? Got a first pitch changeup. And took it for a ball. Mariners down a run. We play in the eighth. One away. Kelnick takes a ball. Close pitch. But the right call. And that's got Dusty Baker out of his seat. Again, Maldonado makes him look so good. Uh, yeah. That's a tough thing. Even from up here when you look. And you might see Dusty at the other end of the dugout soon. Two balls, no strikes. Kelnick in the air to right field, hit pretty well. Tucker is back, he'll make the catch. Oh, Kelnick just missed it by a click on the bat. And a long, loud out for out number two. Well, on his ninth straight changeup, Kelnick, you can see, just got it off the end of the barrel here, and Tucker playing deep. It's a short porch in right field. Doesn't take a lot, and you can see the look on his face. If it's an inch to the barrel, likely out of here. Just enough off the end. A narrow miss for Jared Kelnick. So two men are out now. Tremel still at first. And here's Cal Raleigh. The man who has delivered so many moments here in the last two weeks. Tenth straight change up now. Takes me back to Lance McCullers. 
yeah, right? the World Series. Curveball after curveball. And he kept saying he's got to throw the, the fastball here. And he stuck with it. Cal Raleigh homered in his very first postseason at bat. First player in Mariners history to do it. That was against Alec Manoa in Toronto. That's a fastball in there for a strike. And it's not like he's throwing 92 PA. That was 97. And what it must look like coming off a changeup. Three two Houston two outs eighth inning. Wally good take. Think about how clutch Jordan Alvarez has been. I mean, Raleigh's been that guy. He had the home run that punched the postseason ticket for the Mariners. Pinch hit. Two out home run in the ninth inning. September 30th. Rolls over one foul. Another change up. Now it's 2 2. Just shy of 42,000, they're up, but they're anxious. Montero pitching in his second inning. Two and two, the count. And it's a called strike three. Raleigh is rung up. Montero rings the bell. Four big outs. Rafael Montero sends the Astros to the bottom of the eighth with a lead. We'll have the call. We started off at 12.30 with Ernie Johnson in the gang. And then tomorrow in the National League, Braves and Phillies, Joe Davis, John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal have the call on FS1. Adam Amin, A.J. Pruszynski, and Tom Verducci will have Dodgers Padres on FS1 at 8.30. As Kelnick stays in to play left field and, of course, the electric pitcher for the Mariners Andres Munoz comes in gave up that two run homer to Bregman but right now in this game you put your best guy in BA because you got to keep it a one run game and he's going to have nine one two and the Mariners will have eight nine and one in the ninth inning so Munoz against Maldonado shows punt takes a strike 101 miles an hour well, Cal Raleigh at the plate. He thought that was down, that final pitch. It, it was around the strike zone. There had been a little leeway around the strike zone in the last couple of innings Man, for Rafael Montero. He was so relentless with that changeup that finally Maldonado framed that beautifully. Got the call, got out of the inning. What about if you're Maldonado now? You had a face cast steal throwing... 99 100 and now you get a guy throwing 101 you think uh, Maldonado needs any pine tar or he's good <laughs> <laughs> I mean all over yeah sends that one in the air deep center field Rodriguez at the track will make the catch Got it on the barrel. That look by Munoz tells it all. Thought he gave one up. One away here in the eighth. Take you back to the final pitch of the eighth. They got Montero out of it. Like I said, the thing is they've been working that bottom part of the zone the whole time. I will tell you, that one was closer, B.A., than the other ones. Might have been a tick down, but look at Dusty. Say, hey, man. Dusty can't take still that, working. man. Yeah. He keeps telling us, don't let the old man in. Well, that right there won't let the old man in, I promise you. You'll know you're alive. Jose Altuve bats with one out. Crowd cheering him on here. First ball swinging. And a little PFP. Three to one on the put out. Two outs here for Andres Munoz. 
You know, you almost get the feeling they're almost sitting slider on Munoz in, in a way. I don't want to say sit on it, but you see the late swing there on that fastball by Altuve. Remember, all he did was throw Bregman, four of them, and he finally got him. Two quick outs, and here's Jeremy Pena. And while Jordan Alvarez has delivered the headline moments, let's give credit to Pena twice in front of those home runs. Pena with base hits. He's kept the line moving. He had the two strike two out single in game one in the ninth inning. They got Alvarez to the plate, set up his dramatics, and then had a little flare single with two outs in the sixth inning with the Astros down two to one. That set it up for Alvarez to put him ahead with the opposite field homer. And if you're Munoz, that's the last guy you want to face right now. Presley ready for the save situation. Dusty Baker riding the hand of Rafael Montero. We're seeing some velocity, aren't we? It's incredible. The, the triple digits, the you know, average fastball velocity, 95 miles an hour these days in the major leagues. Oh, that's slow, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so now, so many of these guys are hitting triple digits. But the hitters have also tightened up their swings. And they're getting to some of this velocity. Look out, right under the armpits. Jeremy Pena legacy his father Geronimo Pena seven years in the big leagues most notably with the Cardinals seven years had 30 career homers and his son is a rookie hit 22 big bad looms large on deck and a swing and a miss. I'll tell you what, if I'm paying you right there, I'd have done the same thing. 3-1, Alvarez sitting on deck behind me. <laughs> but for Munoz, that has been his bread and butter pitch all year. Even though you see the 101, he loves that slider. I'm telling you, man. Can, to flip the script, though, if he misses and he doesn't get a swing, and he walks him with a slider. He throws a lot of sliders. That's a fastball, and Pena's on it. He fouls it away. So if you weren't with us for game one, the book right now on Pena as a rookie, he destroys fastballs, susceptible to the breaking ball. There. That's what was so impressive about his hit in game one. Well, again, you are, but he's also such you know a good hitter that if you hang that breaking ball, he'll hit it. Singled off a slider on Tuesday in the ninth inning. 3-2 pitch. Rides a fastball up and in. And Pena draws the walk. Oh, boy. Here he comes. Jordan Alvarez. His two-run home run in the sixth. Flipped the scoreboard. And here's how it sounded on Astros Radio with Robert Ford. The 0-1. Alvarez punishes one deep to left field. Gives it goodbye. And the Lakers Crawford boxes. Astros lead it. Three to two. Who's your daddy? He does it again. I see what Steve Sparks did right there. Your daddy. Yeah. Who's your daddy? I tell you what, they're, I would walk him right here. I'd put him on. I would too. I, I don't think I'd mess with him. I'm not going to lie to you. Take your base. Which is exactly why <laughs> Dusty Baker has Alex Bregman hitting behind him. Scott Service puts up the intentional pass. Now two men on four. Send him. That wasn't a very happy send him no. either. Yeah. Chance to break the game open right here for Alex Bregman. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's the right move, B.A. He's showing you 99-100 away. He'll put it right in the Crawford boxes. And if you come in, he can pull it. So 
you take a chance with a righty-righty matchup, even though Bregman is a very good hitter. Same matchup as we saw Tuesday. Bregman against Munoz. And he shoots one in the right field, a base hit. Hanniger got a good arm. He winds it up. Pena's on his way. And he is in there. Bregman comes through again. Four to two Astros. Well, Bregman, 311 with runners in scoring position. Combined in the regular season and postseason, and right here, veteran hitter, usually patient, gets that first pitch fastball out over the plate and lines it to right field. Hanniger, actually, the ball, watch this, D.A., kind of went up on him right yeah, here. He could have clean. If he'd got a clean, it could have been a bang-bang play. It was close. Pena scores. Make that send every time. If you're Gary Pettis with the throw to the plate, Alvarez goes to third. And the Astros still have it cooking here. 4-2 Houston. Kyle Tucker at the plate. Raleigh had to go get it. Yeah. Just died a little. That is a huge run. And that's why this team is so tough. You pick your poison. You walk Alvarez, which, I, like I said, I, I don't mind that move. But you, you said it. you got to face a good hitter coming up. Pena's at bat. Stellar once again. Deep count. Work the walk. Set all the wheels in motion. Tucker takes the ball. Alvarez had a massive lead. He was halfway to the plate. Now Eugenio Suarez playing off the line a little bit. And you know you're feeling frisky when you're doing that. I'm sure Dusty Baker's like, big fella, just stand right there. Calm down. <laughs> but at the same time, he is getting a big lead because if Munoz spikes that slider, you'll see him dash. Tucker's home run put the Astros on the board. First here today in the second. A oh, swing and a miss. Wow. It's still eye-popping stuff. It, it tells you how good the Astros are. Yeah, you know, Munoz has only been scored on in three games of the last 41 coming into the series. And now game one and game two, he's given up a couple runs. And that's how good these relievers are in the Astros. Keep making it tough on him. Two and one. Tucker fouls it into the net. Munoz gave up three hits. The two-run home run by Bregman in game one. Did have a couple of strikeouts, but three hits in the one inning. And he strikes again. Bregman. When you just needed to add one, they'd love a home run, but the one mattered too. He just punched one to right field. First and third, two outs. Two and two to Kyle Tucker. And he got him. Tucker strikes out. Munoz gets through it, but gives up a run in the process. Alex Bregman shoots one to right. Pena's plate appearance set it all up. Now it's a two-run game. Last call for the Mariners. And the Mariners find themselves trailing by two. The Astros add it on. And the Astros closer, Ryan Presley, is on to try to nail it down and give the Astros a commanding 2-0 lead in this best-of-five series. Yeah, Presley, 33 of 37 saves. He's going to throw that fastball slider majority of the time and then mix that curveball in with it. Frazier's 2-for-2, two two, Crawford 1-for-7, and Julio Rodriguez has never faced him before. Astros with a comeback. They were down... Two to one. Mariners scored twice in the fourth inning. And then Jordan Alvarez with a big two run home run. There was a lot that went on prior to that. That set it up for Alvarez. Frazier takes a ball. Well, Neris came on with the bases loaded in the six. A key 
spot in the ball game. Got Cal Raleigh to ground out to end the inning. Mariners stranded him loaded. And then Jeremy Pena's big hit with two outs in the sixth. Got Alvarez to the plate. Presley deals. Frazier takes ball four. And just like that, the Mariners will bring the tying run to the plate now. Patient at bat by Adam Frazier. You know, we walked into Scott Service's room today. How do you get going? He said, look, we've played a lot of one-run games. We've lost heartbreakers. He said, we've also been able to come back. And this was J.P. Crawford on Tuesday afternoon off Justin Verlander. That home run for J.P. Crawford came in the fourth. At the time, made it a 5-2 ball game. He's the tying run at the plate. And Crawford almost hit by a pitch. Yeah, Presley looks a little shaky to start. Remember, it's been a long layoff here for Ryan Presley. Dusty Baker talked to us about his relievers, guys like Stanek and Presley and Naris, guys who didn't pitch in game one. They've had this extended layoff. It's been eight days for the Astros' closer. Yeah, look, same thing. B.A., he's pitching a lot of postseason games, but still, the first time you do it, you know, it's a little... Got some nerves, got some adrenaline pumping. All day long, Frenchie, the Astros have been able to pitch around the walks. Seven walks today, and that is a high for them. In the last two innings, they've been able to strand them. And here the Mariners are again with another walk to start the ninth. There's a strike. High slider from Presley catches the top corner. Mariners have the tying run at the plate trying to do to the Astros what the Astros did to them two days ago. Oh my goodness Crawford was taking a swing at it comes out of his helmet. Oh. Now he goes right to that same place. The other one was a slider. That one was the curveball. And yeah, Crawford was trying to tie the ball game up there. I think he was trying to cheat on a cutter, if I had to guess. Dropping all kind of equipment. Now it's one and two. Presley has come back with two strikes. Dangerous bat due next. That's the guy the Mariners won at the plate. With a chance to tie or take the lead, Julio Rodriguez. Presley deals. Crawford, a line drive out, and it's going to be a double play. Frazier in no man's land, nothing he could do. If that gets by Guriel, he might score. Yeah, I mean, that Frazier is in sitting duck on that. Pitch in, you see Crawford turn on it right down the line. And he didn't budge. No, he didn't have to go anywhere. Tell you, the Mariners have been riding this Hymns magic all the way to this point. But they got to feel like they're snake bit today. They've yeah. had some line drive outs, some borderline calls go against them at the plate. And now they're down to their last out. Presley facing Julio Rodriguez. That run in the bottom of the eighth, so huge for Houston. Mariners have to hold serve there. They could not. Big rip. Got a hanger, but he missed it. And it's a ball and a strike. It'll be a day off tomorrow, travel day. Series resumes in Seattle. Saturday afternoon. One ball, one strike. 
And a swing and a drive into left center field. That's down and to the wall it goes. Julio Rodriguez on his way to second with a double. This kid's a star. Coming up big when it counts. And again, the Mariners will bring the tie run to the plate. And now, how big is that double play? That looms large. At first, this team, look, they haven't quit all year. So strong, gets pitch out over the plate. Yeah, three hits this series. All for extra bases. Two doubles and a triple. Hey, you probably got the right next two guys you want up. No they question. have the best ability with one swing to tie the game. Presley facing Ty France. Tying run at the plate. Big swing by France. France against Presley. Has a memory. Homered off of him. Two for eight in his career. One of those hits, a long ball. Astros it out away. Swing and a miss. Oh, and to the countdown. Sometimes that's what happens all day. We've seen France be patient. You can tell that front side's flying open. He's trying to tie this ball game up. One and two, spikes one in the dirt. France didn't bite. Outfielders are so deep. Any hit that hits the outfield grass, Julio Rodriguez will score easily. Astros outfielders trying to cut off the extra base hit. France would love to put one in the seats. One ball, two strikes. Ryan Presley deals in the dirt again. Maldonado calmly blocks one. Two and two. I don't care how long you play this game, B.A., that 27th out is always so tough to get. And both these teams keep fighting till the end. We saw it from the Astros on Tuesday, and here the Mariners, same thing. Now the count two and two. Presley fires a swing and a miss. Maldonado blocks it. He'll throw it to first to secure it. And that's the ball game. The Astros win again. And they take a two games to none lead in this best of five division series. A win away from their sixth straight ALCS. And it is Jordan Alvarez who does it once again. The first player in Major League Baseball history to hit a walk-off homer and a go-ahead home run in the very next game. And this guy is on another planet right now. He is. I mean, he's been the story of the game. And then you walk him and Bregman comes up. Uh, and on the other side, look, the, the Mariners had the chances today. Eight walks by the Astros pitchers being only one could cross home plate today that boy that man Castillo pitched a heck of a game but here it is Presley all season and he gets him on that curveball out front and now the Mariners head home oh so close in two games but yet the Astros held serve here at home Presley the save makes a winner out of Hector Neris who threw four pitches and is the winning pitcher in his postseason debut, got out of a bases loaded jam. Final score today 4 2 Astros. They lead 2 0 in the series. Be sure to join us for game three Saturday in Seattle. That'll be 4 Eastern on TBS. Tomorrow you can.